Hey everybody, Thomas Costelli here for another episode of Tax Smart Q and A. And in this episode, I'm going to answer the question: Can you use the short-term rental loophole in the state of California? Before I dive right into that, if you do like this video, be sure to hit that like button to help this video reach the hands of more real estate investors and help them become tax smart. So can you use the short-term rental loophole in the state of California? Well, when it comes to the short-term rental loophole in California, the answer isn't quite clear and it is open for interpretation. We know that California views all rental activities as passive. So the question becomes, does the state of California view short-term rentals as rental activities? The Internal Revenue Code defines rental activities and the exceptions to that definition. And we know that one of the exceptions to that definition is when a rental property has an average stay of seven days or less, it is no longer considered a rental activity. While California does call out specifically that it does not conform to the section of the tax code that contains the real estate professional status, as far as we can find, they make no mention of not conforming to this section, which would lead one to believe that it does. And this is because when states defer from the federal tax code, they generally call it out and let you know that they do not conform to that section. And as far as we can tell, California does not do that, which leads us to believe that they do conform to this section. However, this is not enough to definitively conclude that the state of California recognizes this exception known as the short-term rental loophole. Through our research, we also found a somewhat related task court case where the state of California recognized this exception, the average day of seven days or less. However, it didn't quite apply to short-term rental loopholes. It was used for airplanes. And in that tax court case, while they did recognize the exception, they ultimately found that the taxpayer in question did not meet the exception and the taxpayer ultimately lost that tax court case. So while not definitive, it appears that the state of California does recognize this exception. And you combine that to the fact that they're not calling it out explicitly anywhere one can conclude that they do conform to this section and that a short-term rental with an average stay of seven days or less is not a rental activity under the California state tax code. Now, having said all of that, because there's nothing authoritative that explicitly states the state of California recognizes this exception in the federal tax code, this position does still carry risk. And if you were to take this position and you were to get audited by the state of California, there is a chance you could lose that audit and be subject to back taxes and penalties or perhaps other negative consequences. Now, if you want to learn more about this issue, you can check out our full article we have on this subject in our Tax Smart Insiders group that it comes complete with citations, including the tax court case we mentioned here. So you can review it for yourself or with your CPA and tax professional to see if it's worth exploring further. You can do that by clicking the link in the description below or by going to www.taxsmartinvestors.com and signing up for your risk-free trial today. Again, the link will be in the description below and we'll catch you on the next episode of Tax Smart Q&A.